Okay, there is no reason to beat around the bush in this case. Let's get right to the jugular. The definition of bronchiectasis is an abnormally dilated bronchus due to disease causes. And whereas uh, perhaps the exact mechanism, like many diseases, is not known, uh, in bronchiectasis, whatever the ultimate causes are, you see bronchi that are much larger than they should be. And because they are much larger, maybe they have an inability to function properly, especially to uh, clear organisms. And therefore, large dilated bronchi of bronchiectasis is, are frequently inflamed, like you see here. The whole mucosa is replaced by necrosis, fibrin, inflammatory cells. And you can see some little remnant of... Uh, what normally should line a bronchus, which is uh, pseudostratified ciliated columnar epithelium. Here, completely ulcerated, and here showing some uh, remnants. And I bet if you zip in a little bit more, you'll see some uh, look like goblet cells as well. Um, okay. The one thing that you should think of when you see bronchiectasis, although technically it could be caused by any disease process which results in weakening of the wall, dilatation of the bronchi, and secondary changes, or perhaps secondary to a primary inflammatory change, is tuberculosis. Worldwide, probably 90% uh, of bronchiectasis is caused by tuberculosis. When you think of bronchiectasis, think tuberculosis. There's a few others as well, but probably the next three or four or five on the list aren't nearly as common as tuberculosis. Uh, you could see in here that perhaps 80 and 90 percent of the mucosa is intact. The other uh, 10, 20 percent down here in the south is ulcerated. You could see here is a bronchus or bronchiole. Uh, difference being bronchi have cartilage around them, bronchioles don't. Sometimes that's hard to figure out. Generally, bronchioles are a lot smaller. Um, this could be either. This one is 100% intact. But generally, the ones that are the more uh, the largest are the ones that have the most inflammation uh, for the reasons we mentioned. Um, and even though we see bronchiectasis here, we do not see uh, granulomas of tuberculosis. Um, so it doesn't always uh, occur with acute granulomatous disease. Usually bronchiectasis occurs with TB in the later stages. But in all honesty, this is most likely tuberculosis. I assume it is. And I just don't see any granulomas. Now, if you want to look at it for another 20 minutes and find one and show that I was wrong, you know, I'd be most thrilled. On the other hand, let's give this one more shot, get rid of that digital artifact, and see if we could call this a granuloma. Yeah, I think we could. I think we'd call this a granuloma here. They're epithelioid cells. They're fairly well-defined. And in addition, you could see some giant cells, like here's one, a multinucleated giant cell. Maybe here, maybe here. But here's a classical one down here. Let's zip on it one more power to show you this is a sort of a classical tuberculoid type granuloma, chiefly uh, epithelioid macrophages, multinucleated giant cell here. Uh, not much by way of central caseation necrosis, but usually the small ones don't have too much of that. Thank you very much, uh, bronchiectasis with tuberculosis.